All right, so let's continue with the configuration. We need to go ahead and set up the fstab file. We already did the boot partition earlier, but we need the rest of the file systems as well. So dev mapper gen2 root. All right, dev mapper gen2 temp. Should have been defaults, not default. And dev mapper gen2 varlog. going to add no a time to the root partition and finally we'll add the swap partition all right there we go so let's go ahead and configure the network First, we'll edit the hostname file and set our hostname. We're going to call it Gen2. If you want, you can also set up a DNS domain name, but right now I'm not going to go ahead and do that. So now we need to emerge the net IFRC. All right, and now we can edit the network file. It's blank by default, so let's go ahead and set up a configuration. If you want to do DHCP, you can do it pretty much like that, replacing whatever this string is with your card name. So mine's ENP0S3, but yours might be something different. But I'm actually going to use a static assignment so it's going to be 172.16.1.103.255.255.0 and the broadcast is 172.16.1.255 all right and the routes we're going to set up for this are default via 172.16.1.1 all right so there is our network configuration. So now we need to make sure that the network will start on boot. So we're going to go into etc. net D and we'll link the net.lo file to net ENP0S3. Again, you want to replace that with whatever your network card is. So RC update add net ENP0S3 default. All right, there we go. Now we can go edit the host file, and we want to make sure that our name is in here. So 172.16.1.103 is gen2.localdomain gen2. We can set up the root password now. And now we'll take a look at some of the other configurations we can take a look at. So the rc.conf information, really most of this isn't very important. In fact, all the defaults should pretty much be left like they are. You can read through it if you like, but there's very little things that you might need to change in there. Uh, key maps might be important. But if you're in the U.S., it's going to have the default there. The final thing is the hardware clock. Uh, the clock should be set to UTC normally unless you dual boot with Windows. And everything else here can probably be set like it is. So the defaults are pretty much good. Now we need to install a few tools. We need to install a logger, a cron daemon, file indexing, and remote access tools. So let's go ahead and install that. I'm going to emerge our syslog and crony and locate 
and I'm also going to go ahead and install Grub2. So, probably meant just Grub there. Alright, so that all looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and install that. And I will be back when those things are finished compiling. All right, now that all of our packages are done compiling, let's go ahead and add our new services to the run levels. So, RC update, add our syslog D default, our syslog, not our syslog D. We'll add crony to the default, and we'll add SHD to the default. If you needed to set up DHCP, you also need to install a DHCP client, like DHCP CD. I'm going to go ahead and skip that, because it's in the package you can install, but if you need that, you will want to install that. Alright, finally, let's go ahead and configure the bootloader. We've already installed Grub. All we're going to need to do, then, is to do grub install dev sda there we go we'll skip over the lilo efi and syslinux and finally you just need to add a user for daily use so let's go ahead and do that now user add m g users wheel that's probably enough for now bash sysenge Alright, one more thing before we reboot, I almost forgot, is because we used LVM, we need to merge the LVM2 package. Otherwise, our system won't boot. So, let's go ahead and install that. Alright, and one final thing we need to do is to set up the gen kernel with the LVM module. So, gen kernel dash dash LVM install init ram fs all right now that we've got lvm compiled all we need to do is add that parameter to our grub curl configuration so we'll edit etc default grub and we're going to go change the command line Linux default. And we're going to add do LVM. And now we need to remake our grub configuration. All right. And now we should be able to reboot into our Gen 2 installation. So we'll go take a look at the virtual box. Going to remove the system rescue CD, and now we'll boot into our Gen2 install. All right, there you go, and that is how you install Gen2 Linux. See you next time.